Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today we are going to be working on some DIY projects to make your home feel cozy. So let's get started with DIY number one. This one is one that I've been wanting to make for a while. It is a Lazy Susan, like a mini version. I got my supplies at Hobby Lobby, um, but you could probably get yours at Home Depot or Michaels or any kind of craft store. Um, I think... If I remember correctly, the wood section at my Hobby Lobby was 50% off this day or 40%. Um, I'm also using this scrap wood piece that I had in the garage. That is going to be like the bottom base part. I just wanted the pretty wood to be on the top. So for the bottom, I'm making the circle just a little bit smaller than the top. I think you could make them the same size. There's a bunch of... Um, really in-depth videos on how to do Lazy Susans. Mine is not so in-depth. It's just kind of, I'm winging it because this is my first time making one. <laughs> so this is my circle. I'm going to cut it out. I took it out in my garage and I'm using my little handy dandy saw. I'm getting a little bit more used to using this and using clamps to hold it in place instead of my hands, which is so much safer, so be sure to do that. Wear your eye protection mask if you have one. And I am just cutting the circle, or as much of a circle as I can. Like I said, I'm not um, really good at using this saw, so my circle is a little bit wobbly, but I wasn't too worried about that because I have my hand sander here. I'm just going to take down some of the, um, you know, splintered pieces and try and round out the edges a little bit better. And then I am taking my top circle or top um, wood piece and tracing it on this construction paper. That way I can find the center of my circle to attach my um, Lazy Susan hardware. So for this, this way of finding the center, was the easiest for me to explain. There's plenty of other ways. I know it's easier, you know, doing math and stuff like that, but <laughs> this one, I'm just taking the um, cutout circle and folding it in half and then folding it in half again, and then cutting a hole in the center. And this will give you basically the center of your um, wood round. And then you just want to place it over your wood round and then um, put the dot in the middle my construction paper is very old, as you can tell. It just pretty much broke in half. <laughs> and then place your hardware on the bottom of your wood round. It's, it's the top piece, but it's the bottom of the top piece. <laughs> um, and then I measure just to make sure the hardware was center. And then you want to mark your holes because you're going to pre-drill before you, um, you know, screw down the hardware. And I ended up screwing up and using too big of a um, an attachment, so my holes were too big for the screws. So I had to redo it. You don't need this many holes. <laughs> I just screwed up. So I'm using these smaller holes to attach um, the hardware. And then you want to do the same thing on the top part of your bottom wood round, <laughs> if that makes sense. So you just want to do the same thing where you um, place your hardware over this, that little center dot and then make sure it is center from the outside edges. Then you're going to pre-drill your holes and then screw in um, the screws to hold the hardware on. I'm using the screwdriver. I love it. You just put it down and then turn it in the direction that you want it to go. I, I have this listed in my description box, I believe. So after the Lazy Susan is attached to your bottom piece, you're going to turn it just like I did, mark a hole right in the center of, um, you know, the two screwed in edges. I don't know if this is making sense. It's probably easier to just watch it. <laughs> then you want to take a um, bigger drill bit because you're going to need this big enough for your screwdriver to fit in because this is going to be how you attach the bottom to the top. 
and you're going to take that little hole that you just drilled, line it up with um, your hardware, and then feed the screws through, and then screw them down. I know it looks a little off-center, but it isn't. <laughs> and then just make your way around to all four screws. And there you go. I think I explained it a little bit more complicated than it actually was. <laughs> So I thought you could leave it like this and definitely you'd want to seal it, especially if it's um, by the sink. Okay, Kitty wants to make a, an appearance, so here you go. <laughs> um, you definitely want to seal it, like I said, because it's right next to the sink, so anything um, that splashes on it would um, stain it if you didn't have a sealer on it. But I thought this would be really cute for... Um, you know, your dish soap, your hand soap, your little scrubby brushes. But I'm actually going to paint it because I'm going to put this, this one on our coffee bar with our flavored syrups. But I wanted to show it to you with just the raw wood too. Okay, so since I'm putting mine on my coffee bar, I'm going to paint the top part white and then this black because I kind of want it to disappear. And um, behind our coffee bar is um, a chalkboard wall. So I'm just using some of this black craft paint, acrylic paint, and then just some regular white. I don't have any chalk paint or I'd be using that and then sealing it. So I'm just going to get started. And I thought it would be okay to do this white because um, I know for a while everybody was painting everything white, but I've done plenty of projects lately that um, have the wood tone kind of like this um, little tray so I can link that above if you want to see it so let me know if you guys do make one are you going to leave it the raw wood or are you going to paint yours and definitely you don't have to paint the bottom but um I just like to make it look and feel more finished, so I try and paint the bottoms like as if you were buying something from a store. And it would probably make your life a whole lot easier if you painted this before you put the pieces together, but I was kind of undecided on what look I was going for, so I didn't know if I was going to leave it, um, you know, just wood and stain it or if I was going to paint it. So here's mine all finished. I think it looks really cute on our coffee bar. If you hear something, I just brewed some coffee. I think it's almost done. <laughs> but I think this is going to be perfect for when we have family and friends over. Um, you can just turn it for whatever flavor you want. And I could add, you know, more bottles on here if I wanted or like the little, um, like the little cinnamon thing. You could decorate it however you wanted. Oh, I gotta take the little price tag off that from Goodwill. But I think it goes really cute with my um, coffee shelves that we did. I think it was last year or the year before. So let me know what you guys think and let me know if you're gonna make one too. DIY number two. So I just picked these up at Goodwill. They're candles from originally from Target, and I'm guessing they're um, Halloween candles, but I thought if I painted them, maybe they would look not so Halloween-ish. So I'm gonna tape these off and paint them and we'll see what happens. I wasn't sure which spray paint I was going to use. I just ended up using the regular um, flat paint. I think if I had a creamier color, I would have gone with that over the pure white. I might still do that after I um, sand on the edges. The only thing I would have changed, I might still be able to do it, just to go over these lines in the plastic. I don't know if you can see them. Um, and just sand them down and then maybe shoot them again with the spray paint just to take down some of the fake look to it. 
but I'm going to take off the tape and then style my candles. And I might get one more um, if they still have them at Goodwill. Can you see it flickering? So this is a scrap piece of wood that I had in the garage left over from my last project and I'm taking some cheesecloth and laying that down. I thought that would be really pretty. I've seen that in tons of Pinterest pictures lately. And this is perfect to have up during Christmas and leave up through winter because, you know, it doesn't just scream Christmas. <laughs> And then I'm just taking some of this um, lamb's ear, I think it's called, from Walmart. They have some of the best um, greenery picks and florals, and they're really cheap too. Like some of them are only 98 cents or just a little bit over a dollar. So you get great quality for sometimes even cheaper than the dollar store. And then I just wanted to add some more greenery with a little bit different textures. And then I added some pine cones to bring in the outdoors and then added some bells that I made in this video. I can link that in my description box if you're interested. So let me know what you guys think of this one. And also, how many of you leave your Christmas trees up after Christmas? Like I leave mine up, but take down the ornaments and just have the white lights and stuff through winter. I think that's really pretty. Anyway, on to DIY number three. This one's super simple. All you want is some sort of citrus fruit and just slice it really, really thin. We're going to be making potpourri. It's not like crazy intense potpourri. It's really light, but it smells so good and I think it's so pretty. But I just took oranges and lemons and just sliced them really, really thin. I also took an apple and while I'm cutting this apple and doing other things, I have my orange slices in the oven. Um, a bunch of people that I read said 170 degrees at like three to four hours, that's fine. I did mine at like 200 for a little bit longer and dried them out because I don't have a dehydrator. So this was the best way that I could do it. And then I just added the apple slices to that same tray. And I think it's so pretty. I love how it turned out and it smells really good too. I think it just adds a bunch of texture and like a cozy feel to your room. On to DIY number four. Alright, so this one I thought I would do a trash to treasure. So if you have a condiment jar or an old vase that maybe you've DIY'd that you don't use anymore, then grab one of those. You're going to need some of these skewers. I believe I got these from the dollar store, I think. But if you have to get them at Walmart or anything, um, they're really cheap. Why? Every time you turn the camera on, she meows. <laughs> You're also going to need some sort of ribbon or twine, whatever your style is and whatever look you're going for. Something to cut the skewers, they cut just fine with scissors too, and a hot glue gun. So you want to take your vase, measure a couple of the skewer rods, I forgot my pencil, but you want to mark right at the top of whatever, um, you know, bottle you're using. Probably just need to mark one and then mark the rest. So I suggest before you get too far to cut it on your mark and then hold it up to your jar. Make sure it's where you want it on the top and then go ahead and um, mark the rest of them. That way you know it's perfect. You could probably do a whole bunch at a time. You could probably take a ruler and lay it right across here and that way you get like a perfectly straight line. Now these do kind of fly all over the place when you cut them. 
So you might want to wear some sort of safety glasses. <laughs> So this part is very easy. We're just going to start attaching the skewer rods to the bottom of your jar. I really don't, well, the bottom doesn't matter, I guess, if you put a bunch of hot glue because that's going to be covered up with your ribbon. And you wanna make sure they're right next to each other. So as I was putting the sticks on, I realized I didn't really like the look of them all together. It was kinda of like, slanting kind of funny so I started pulling them off every other one and I like the look of it a little bit better and you don't have to worry about the um, glue at the bottom because that's going to be covered up with your rope so it looks really tacky right now <laughs> but that'll be covered up so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of hot glue and this will give it another layer of um, security with the glue and the rope or twine, whatever you decide to use. You might want to put on your little rubber fingers for this too because <laughs> I burnt my fingers a couple times. And then this is what it looks like. The top isn't secure. So you can decide now, do you want them to go straight up? Do you want to glue it that way? Or do you want to glue them with a little twist? I'm going to go straight up just because, I don't know, that's what I had in mind in the beginning. <laughs> And you're gonna put more um, of your ribbon and stuff up here. So you wanna try and keep the glue down lower than the lip of your vase, um, just cause you don't wanna see that. And then I just wrapped mine around the same number of times that I did on the bottom and then covered up the sticks with um, the rest of the rope that I had. And you probably wanna make sure the back the bottom is the same as the back for the top. And this is it all finished. Let me know what you guys think. DIY number five was kind of a fail. <laughs> it was a mirror I got from Goodwill. I was so excited for it. All right, so I stopped into Goodwill and I found this beauty. It's about 42 by 40, I think I measured. $12.99, I couldn't pass it up. So I will show you in another upcoming video how I did this, my fails and how I fixed it, but that won't be till after Christmas. So I hope you guys stop by for that. I wanna thank you guys so much for stopping by and crafting with me today. I really appreciate all of you and all of your love and support and sweet comments. I hope you have a great holiday and I will see you next time. Bye.